welcome back. If you uh, are wondering how we got to this stage, check out my previous, I think, three videos uh, about this guitar, the how to paint your guitar videos that I've done. So, now we've got this thing all base coated. Uh, I put some uh, transparent base coat over top of the blue to make sure that it was sealed in because I'm going to be masking over top of it and I went ahead and scuffed that down so I've got a nice flat finish to work on. So now we're going to get into some graphics basically, going to make it look a little more interesting. If you're just looking for a simple coat like this, a simple color and then clear coat, uh, that's fine. Nothing wrong with that. Uh, my clear coating video should be coming out fairly soon. But clear coating, uh, clear coat gets everywhere, so I'll talk about it, but I, but I won't actually be spraying it on camera because it'll wreck the camera. So just keep that in mind. Anyway, let's get started on the graphics for this. So I've got this thing taped off with my two strips showing. I did it with green painter's tape. Yes, I know that using something like this, transfer tape or frisket, depending on where you are and what you call it, I know that that would have probably been more efficient, but I had a lot of painter's tape kicking around, so I went with that instead. You saw me put the blue fine line tape on here, so I just masked around that. Now, I've got my gun loaded up. Got my gun loaded up with Auto Air Aluminum Course. It's a really big gun and I'm painting a very small area. The only reason I'm using this is because it's got a large nozzle size and I'm using uh, uh, the uh, coarse aluminum which has a, a very large pearl in it. Uh, and I didn't want to try and pass it through a smaller nozzle because I'm using it unreduced for this. So I've got my bag, this is just a, a grocery bag or whatever, I'm trying to clean it off because I've used it for this a few times. Try and make sure that there's no like dust on it when you do this. I've already tacked off this surface, so now I'm going to lay this stuff on heavy, unlike what I would normally do with uh, waterborne paint. And I'm going to do a technique called negative marbleizing, if you can call it that, or uh, there are a lot of different goofy names for it, I'm just going to call it that. I'm going to use the bag to manipulate the paint after to get an interesting texture. There we go. Let's let that dry. I'll unmask it and uh, show you what I ended up with. All right, so now it's time to start airbrushing this. I'm going to throw some transfer tape on there or frisk it, depending on what part of the world you're in. Uh, then I'll draw out a design on there and start airbrushing it. This is a uh, perfect tear, but transfer right, perfect tear, whatever it happens to be. There are lots of different brands of this stuff. It's basically just a big roll of masking tape but very low tack. Be careful about what you're using to do masking on something like this because you can quite easily pull your paint up if you're not, well, careful. <laughs> All right, here we go. They have spatulas for doing this properly, but I'm kind of lazy, so I'm just gonna use my hand.
right, so now our airbrush graphics all blocked out. Uh, from here on in, I'm going to go freehand on it, probably. It's going to take quite a few layers, so we're going to move on to that in the next video. Just have it blocked out for this one. Uh, if you're relatively new at airbrushing, I recommend that you don't peel off your stencil as quickly as I did. You kind of pick something that's going to have a hard edge for your graphic and then leave your stencil on there and do your shading and everything with it on there. That'll make it a lot easier for you. So this one I'm kind of going to have to uh, mess with the boundaries of it a bit because it's supposed to be fire. So it's not going to really have even this shape when all said and done. And that's why I had to take my stencil off earlier. Otherwise I would have left it on and it would have made my life a bit easier. Uh, one other thing to concern yourself with with the stencil though is you will have ridges where your paint builds up. It's really loud in here all of a sudden. I think uh, we're having a thunderstorm or something. Anyway, that's where I'm going to leave this for this video. And in the next one, we'll move on to the rest of the freehand airbrushing. Hopefully I can squeeze that all into one. And then we'll get into the clear coat and everything like that. So, thank you for watching and see you next time.